Hey guys, in this video, I want to tell you a little bit more about my experiences living and traveling all over the world. While you might get bits and pieces of my story from all the content on this site, I want to use this video to give you the full story so that you can have the context to really understand my experiences. I also hope that this video will inspire you to achieve your international dreams. I hope the main message that comes through as I tell my story is that if I can do this, then you can too. Okay, so let's start my story. It all begins for me back in Mobile, Alabama in the United States when I was 12 years old. I started getting an interest in the Japanese language and culture. It started for me with the animation, the video games, all of those cultural exports coming from Japan into the United States at the time. And so when the opportunity came for me to be able to get a book and cassette tape set from my mom's book selling company and start those studies, that's exactly what I did. After going through this three month book and cassette tape course, Two times, I had the fortunate opportunity to move to Los Angeles with my family. I started taking after school classes. I started working with tutors. I went to speech contests. I did everything really that I could do to be able to become more proficient in the Japanese language. I finally took my first trip to Japan when I was 17 years old. It was the best experience that I'd had traveling, seeing the world up to that point. It totally blew my mind and as high of expectations as I had for Japan, it absolutely exceeded them on every level. So I came back from that trip and I just knew that I needed to continue studying Japanese and find a way to live in Japan sometime in the future. I decided to attend the University of Texas at Austin and there I studied finance as well as Japanese to be able to leverage my interest in Japan and the Japanese language into something that hopefully I'd be able to do in an international context. While I was in university, I also had an opportunity to study abroad at the National University of Singapore. So I went there for one semester and that was also an incredible experience, getting to meet so many like-minded people, to have these international experiences, to take weekend trips all over Southeast Asia. And on top of all the fun that I had, it really showed me that I can be successful in so many different international environments. It doesn't have to just be Japan, although of course that was my passion at the time. Coming out of university, I really wanted to be able to have my first job be in Japan, but unfortunately I could not find that opportunity, and so I started my career back in the United States. Coming out of an undergraduate finance degree, I decided to start my career in investment banking, and I really put those dreams of living abroad to the side. After two years of living and working in Charlotte, North Carolina, I was transferred to the San Francisco office of the company, and there's where I started looking into more technology companies as possible next steps in my career. It only took six months for me to find my first job outside of investment banking, and that was as a product manager at a technology company. When I started working at that company, I didn't do it because I thought that it would help me to get abroad. But about nine months into the job, I had an opportunity to go to either Vancouver or Beijing for a three-month work deployment to be able to work with the local teams in those offices. I volunteered for both of them, and so the company picked Beijing for me. So that's where I headed back in 2013 for about three months. I had been to China before, I actually visited by myself for a couple of weeks after my semester in Singapore, but going this time as an employee, getting paid a good salary, getting to go with other people from the company, and just living it up for a couple of months was an incredible experience. China seemed to be the way that the future was headed at the time, so I said, yes, please send me back, I'm just happy to be abroad. So I came back from that experience, really excited to go back to China again, but unfortunately I found out about a month later that I was being laid off from the company. So 30 minutes after I got the news, I was on the street with my cardboard box full of my desk ornaments and my vision of at least another year in China suddenly vanishing in front of my eyes. As you can imagine, it was quite a traumatic experience, but honestly, only a few days later, I realized I'm not gonna let any company decide whether or not I'll be able to live and work abroad. I decided that I was gonna make it happen no matter what it took. So about a month later, I left on a two month trip around Europe mostly Western Europe, going to, I believe it was 10 countries and 19 cities. And so I did that in nine weeks. It was a crazy train trip all around Europe, and it was a fantastic time. But while I was doing it, I was also taking interviews in both China and Japan to try to find my next opportunity and to get to live abroad for the long term. So it was a huge challenge, but it's still something that I took on. And I'm glad that I did, because on my very last day of that trip, I had my final interview for a job that ultimately gave me an offer which was in Tokyo, Japan. So I went back to the United States, I just got packed up, I got my visa, and a couple months later, I was off to Tokyo. So as you might imagine, being able to actually be in Japan this time as a resident and not as a tourist, to be living there, speaking Japanese, taking in the sights, taking in the culture, it was an unbelievable, unforgettable experience. Though I loved my time in Japan, though I had a great experience there, 
I could see that my job was coming to an end relatively soon, and I could also not find that next job that I wanted to be able to do in Japan. I applied for a ton of different positions, but ultimately, my career was very important to me, and so I wanted to make sure that I was doing something that still furthered my career. I couldn't find that next opportunity there, and so then I thought back to my experiences traveling around Europe and how much I loved Berlin, Germany. I'd also heard that there were a lot of English-speaking jobs in Berlin, so I thought, let's give it a try, and I started applying to jobs there. It took a few months to make it happen, but ultimately I got a job offer in Berlin, and so I left Tokyo back in 2016 to move to Berlin, Germany. I did have some job changes while I was there. I ended up working at three companies total. I also met my wife during the time that I was living in Berlin. Not too long after we met, we started to talk about where would be next for us after Germany. We both had a perspective that Germany was not for us long term, and so we talked about a number of different options, but the one that kept coming up was Portugal. We visited Portugal in October of 2018, both Lisbon and Porto, and came back convinced that this was the country that we wanted to be in. It's another long story to try to make it short. In April of 2019, I found out the third company I was working for in Berlin, Germany, was going to be letting me go. So basically from, let's say, May 2019, on, I was already looking at new job opportunities all around Europe. So it was really a busy time of taking interviews, going to different countries to talk to different companies, network, and to try to find a job offer somewhere. It finally came in September of 2019 when I got the offer to come and work for a company here in Porto, Portugal. And my wife and I were so happy. Uh, it was just a wonderful time. So packed up all of our things and left in November of 2019 to move here to Porto. We've really loved living here in Portugal. We found it to be everything that we wanted and more. So it's been a wonderful time here. Unfortunately, that job also came to an end in October of 2020 based on the pandemic uh, budget cuts. But it's been a wonderful opportunity for me because it's allowed me to refocus on Expat Empire and build my own career abroad. So just as a little overview of Expat Empire, I started this company back in 2018 with the launch of my book, Passport to Working in Japan, and also the launch of the website, expatempire.com. In addition to the book that I mentioned, we also have online courses, we have the Expat Empire podcast, we have blog posts, we have all kinds of content available at expatempire.com. But on top of that, we also offer personalized consulting services to help people to be able to move abroad successfully. No matter where you're moving from or where you're moving to, we try to offer services that are going to be most helpful to our clients in achieving their international dreams. In addition to my moves to different countries all over the world, I've also had the opportunity to travel to nearly 60 countries. From Brazil to Jordan, from Australia to Iceland, I've been able to see a ton of different amazing things and met wonderful people along the way. I also started scuba diving back in 2011, so it's been a great opportunity for me to be able to have land trips where I only see stuff above the water and also sea trips as well. Thanks so much for checking out this video and listening to my story. If you enjoyed it, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment below. Safe travels and see you soon.